Welcome to the Wills and Estate Transmission Podcast, brought to you by DeGroote's, specialist lawyers in wills and estates. Hi, I'm Kate Donnan, an associate at DeGroote's. In today's episode, we'll be talking about all things estate administration. And today, I'm joined by my co-host, Tony. Tony, how are you? I'm great, thanks, Kate. And it's good to be back. And we've got some um, podcast and video and blogs that we love sharing with everybody. And we've had some questions come in that's in your area of expertise. So that's why we've got you in today. So thanks for doing that. Not a problem. Okay, so um, I guess one of the key things that gets lots of disputes is to do with burial and cremation. I know lots of people don't like talking or thinking about that, um, but it needs to be dealt with, and lots of disputes between family members. So how do you recommend that that's dealt with in a a will in the first instance? Sure, Tony. So you're right. That is an area where we are seeing a lot of disputes, And as you would imagine, it's quite an emotional time for people. They're already dealing with the loss of a loved one. And then to have to fight about whether or not, say, dad is cremated or buried can add huge uh, additional stress and cost uh, if it has to go to court to be resolved. So the position at law is that your legal personal representative, so that's your executor if you've written a will, or your administrator, if you didn't leave a will, is entitled to deal with your body. So make decisions about will you be buried or will you be cremated. Now, if you've left a will, it's our recommendation that you do put in some wishes, whether that's in your will or a separate document addressed to your executor, stating whether or not you'd like to be buried or cremated. Because when these things do get litigated, and unfortunately they do, um, the court will look to see if there was any wishes known about the person that passed away. And I think it's important to note that the rules are different in each state and territory, so it's really important to speak to a specialist. For example, if you pass away and you lived in New South Wales and you had a written direction in your will that said that you do not want to be cremated, your executor cannot have your body cremated. The same position in Victoria is that if you've said you don't want to be cremated, you cannot be cremated. Whereas in Queensland, it's the opposite. So if you direct that you should be cremated, your executor has to have your body cremated. So that's one way around it if you do leave clear wishes. But of course, sometimes people don't put this in. As you said, it's not necessarily a pleasant topic and not everybody wants to think about this sort of thing. If, for example, you didn't leave a will, so your administrator um, is the person that decides what happens with your body, there can be huge issues where there might be more than one person entitled to be your administrator. So as an example, if we look at the unfortunate situation where a minor child passes away, they wouldn't have a will in place. So under the rules of intestacy in New South Wales, both mum and dad would have equal standing to be the administrator. So what happens when mum and dad don't agree on what happens with their child's body? Well, there was a recent case about this in 2022 and the court had to decide whether mum's wishes or dad's wishes were followed through. But it was an expensive and costly experience for all parties involved. Um, And it also highlights some of the spiritual and religious issues that arise, particularly when we're dealing with Indigenous persons who may have requirements that they not be cremated or that their remains go back to um, their uh, important lands. So I think... The, the answer, uh, the long way around, Tony, mm. is that if you have strong wishes or even if you want to avoid the issue of, say, your children or your new partner and your children from a former marriage having a dispute, put your wishes in writing um, and, and do it in a way that it's very clear so that there can be no arguments about what it is that you wanted to happen. Right. So when... Um... You go around telling people, I want to be buried or cremated or whichever your wishes may be. 
that's not enough. That can come in, and there have been cases where people have given evidence, say, you know, Tony told me, sorry, Tony, to use you, but Tony yep. told me he always wanted to be cremated. The issue with that is it costs time and money to have you appear. And then what if someone else turns around and says, well, he always told me he wanted to be buried. So to avoid that, um, having your wishes documented in writing is is really the safest way to avoid the issue. Right. Thanks for that. So we're going to follow the um, the road that we took in the last podcast about pets. So for a lot of people these days, pets are like little fur babies. Yes. Little loved ones. <laughs> So is there any benefit or reason why you'd leave instructions for how you want your pets dealt with in your will? There's very important and good reason sometimes to put things in your will about your pets and their future care. But as Max touched on, under the law, your pets are considered chattels or items of personal property. So you can't leave them a gift, but you can leave wishes about their care or you can leave money for people on the basis they care for your pets. Linking that to your questions about cremation, Tony, um, and, and burial of pets, there was some time ago... Um, some provisions in certain wills that would say, when I pass away, I want my pet taken to the vet and put down, with the thinking being that no one else could care for my pet as well as I could. But I have to say that has certainly fallen out of favour, and I'm sure the listeners would understand that, because a direction to euthanise a pet is, of course, probably against grounds of public policy, but also cruelty to animals. So we're seeing more in wills that you might put a direction about how you want your pet to be cared for, cared for even some guidelines like you might do for a minor child because you know our pets are very important to us. But you really wouldn't see these days any direction about having a pet put down uh, once you pass away. Well, that's great and we're not in Egypt anymore so there you go <laughs> exactly you don't get buried with your cat <laughs> thanks for listening today don't forget to subscribe and if you require any further information please go to our website www.degroots.com.au and book a consultation the contents of this podcast do not constitute legal advice and are of a general nature only Listeners should make their own inquiries about their specific circumstances and seek legal advice.